Hey Wargamers, it's Gregor. So Armored Warfare is a very interesting game of wits and many senses, expanding upon the formula of similar games in interesting ways. However, for people who've never played games in this genre, it may seem a bit overwhelming to get a really good hold of it at the base level, let alone its more complex mechanics. So I thought I'd make a video about some things you can do right now to improve your play in Armored Warfare, regardless of your personal playing preferences. It all goes along a personal philosophy of mine that I apply to many aspects of my life. Just use everything that's available to you. First, and this has to do with the beginning of the game, when the countdown timer is going down, you want to look at three things. Check your team's composition, check your enemy's composition, and look at the minimap. Now why are you doing this? Well, there's lots of different vehicles in this game. They all do different things. A good driver is going to use their vehicle in a different way depending on the terrain. By looking at what kinds of tanks are on your team and the enemy team, you can make reasonable predictions as to where they're going to go and some ways should go. However, your idea of where the team should go may be different than what the rest of the team specifies for themselves at the individual level. So it's up to you to look at the minimap and look to see where they are going. For instance, if you're driving a brawling main battle tank at top tier, you're gonna be the spearhead for your other main battle tank drivers. It's likely that you, or at least you and other top tier drivers, are gonna be the first line in combat down a big choke point. If you're bottom tier, you should stick with your team, ideally the top tiered vehicles of similar class to you. Likewise, by looking at the enemy team's composition, you can make general predictions as to what kinds of vehicles you may encounter on your corner of the map. You'll also need to be aware of the presence of enemy artillery if it's there, as well as any sneaky tank destroyers. The more you play a certain map, the easier this process becomes, and you'll get a better picture of where the action's going to be happening. So you need to position yourself in relation to your team. And this leads me to my second point. Don't overcommit. What's overcommitting? If you've ever played League of Legends, the term you'd be familiar with is overextend. Basically, overcommitting is the act of unnecessarily exposing yourself to engage an opponent to the point where you don't give yourself any room to retreat safely. It's an easy problem to define, a more difficult one to keep from doing. One can overcommit in a number of ways. Here's a makeshift diagram of mine to demonstrate such a thing when peeking a corner in a main battle tank. You can see what example maximizes the usage of your armor and which one exposes the side to return fire. Basically, be conscientious of your vehicle. If you have a lot of armor, try to maximize the usage of the armor. If you have a tough turret, try to find inlets in the terrain where you can block your usually vulnerable lower hull plate from getting shot. This is called getting hull down. Trying not to overcommit is also a matter of another thing that I strongly suggest. Don't waste your HP pool. When you overcommit, you get shot. When you get shot, you lose HP. When you lose HP, you lose a certain amount of agency in a fight. It prevents you from making maneuvers to get shots on enemies that would result in you taking return fire as well. Whenever you lose a certain amount of HP, which will inevitably happen as mistakes are made, you need to make sure of one thing, that whenever you lose HP, you've dealt at least the same amount of damage back or at least assisted in doing so. Otherwise, you are just a credit pinata for the enemy team, rather bluntly put, useless or of negligible help. Every move you make has to have a purpose. I'm going here to get flank shots on a choke point. I'm going here to support my allies in case the enemy makes a mistake. I'm going here to hold a choke point or a corner, etc. HP isn't as important for long range oriented classes that rely on not being seen in the first place, but it's especially important for main battle tanks. No one is going to care that you're holding a corner if you're one-shottable. And, in the worst event, if your tank gets blown up, you're not going to be able to shoot back at enemies yourself. But I mentioned that HP is more or less important depending on your class, and this leads to another point. Know your vehicle. Take some time to do a little bit of research as to the specifics of your vehicle. All of the stats are available in-game to you for a reason. Do a little bit of comparison and contrast. Tank destroyers are pretty straightforward, but there's a lot of diversity among other classes in the game, particularly the main battle tanks. For instance, the T-64 is all about getting up close and personal, thanks to its armor and high alpha gun. The OF-40, on the other hand, relies on its good long-range gun handling. 
you're going to behave differently in these vehicles depending on their characteristics, so learn them. And more importantly, practice putting effective play into use. The dossier function in game does a good job of giving you an overall picture of how you're performing with your vehicles. My general rule of thumb is to give a vehicle at least 30 matches before I've drawn a serious conclusion about it. If I'm pulling anything higher than a 55% win rate in it, I can assume that I'm doing a fairly good job with a fairly effective machine. If it's anything lower than 50%, perhaps there are elements I can improve in my own play with the machine, or maybe it's a tad bit underpowered, but that's a conclusion that you need to come to based off of statistics in comparison to other vehicles. But sometimes, there's a certain point at which you might just be drawing blanks. You might feel totally stumped. And the next logical step is simple. Watch good players. Check out the resources that are available to you. There are plenty of YouTubers out there making regular content about Armor Warfare with the intent of helping players improve their game. If you're having problems with a particular tank, look up replays of that tank or articles pertaining to them on the forums, on blogs, what have you. Practice doesn't necessarily mean perfect if your practice isn't perfect too. There are going to be certain things you may not pick up upon unless you watch how other players explain their rationale to you. Don't be afraid to derive effective strategies of play from others who have demonstrated effective play again and again. If you're coming into this totally blind, you can form your own personal play style after a certain period of time. Those are the five things I apply to my play in Armor Warfare. I guarantee that if you do the same, you'll see some improvements in as little as your first match. And the sky is the limit. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe for more content like this. I'm Gregor. Thanks so much for watching.